Welcome to Math in a Box with Susan Johnsey. In this lesson we are going to learn how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. Before you study this lesson you really need to have studied a quadratic and how to factor them. An example of a quadratic that we're going to look at today is actually not going to be a factorable one, although you can't really tell that until you begin working with it x squared minus 6x plus 1, or excuse me, plus 2 equals 0. Now this quadratic is written in what's called standard form. The standard form for a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. We like the quadratic to be equal to 0 most of the time. The a is the number that is beside the x squared, b is the number that we ref that's beside the x, and c is the number that stands by itself. Not all quadratics have a b, term, b or a c, but they must all have an a. Uh, if we don't have the a, then we don't have the x squared, and that's the part of being a quadratic is that it has an x squared term. So for this quadratic equation that I have written here. Uh, a is a 1, the b is a negative 6, and c is the positive 2. And it is written in the standard form uh, equal to 0. The first steps in completing the square require you to do something with the a and the c. It doesn't really matter which of those two steps we do first, but they must be done first. Uh, the first thing I want to go ahead and do is move the C to the right side. This is a positive 2, so of course I'm going to subtract 2 from each side, and I will have x squared minus 6x equals negative 2. So I move C to the right. Hopefully you can read that. Step 2 is um, to be sure A is a 1. If a is not a 1, then we have to divide by that. In this problem, I let a equal a 1, so we don't have to really do this step, but we will see that in the second example. If your a is not a 1, then you must divide the entire equation by a. All right, the third step is now to complete the square, and this is where we look at b. See, the first two steps you use a and c, the third step, though, is where you look at b. b is our negative 6. Now I'm going to build a little box here for this. It's very important to see what we do with this. And we'll actually do two steps with it. We're going to take the b, which is a negative 6, and we are going to multiply it by a half. And we will also square it. So if I multiply negative 6 by 1 half, I will have a negative 3. A negative 3 squared, of course, is 9. So what we do with that is on each side now of our equation, we will write or add 9. On each side of the equation. You know equations have to stay balanced. And if we have a left side, what's to the left of the equal marks, and we have what's to the right of the equal marks. And if we add on the left, we add on the right the same amount. All right, so we have uh, step three was to use the b, and we half, took half of that, and we squared it, just to write a few notes here of what we did. And now we're going to add that to both sides. So there's three things that we have to do on step three. All right, the fourth step then, on the left side, we factor. And on the right side, we will simplify. Oops, I'm trying to write a few notes for you. 
Hopefully you can read them. So on the right, the left side, this is a quadratic, and that's why I mentioned earlier that you really need to understand how to factor. We are going to factor this quadratic. It factors into x minus 3 times x minus 3. And that will equal, and then on the right side, we just simplify this. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7. Once you've done that, then rewrite this side, the left side. Oops, that's not correct. Sorry. We're going to write x minus 3. And since it's written twice, we're going to put x minus 3 down and put a parenthesis around it and square that. That means the same thing. So x minus 3 squared equals 7. Let's look at a second example now. 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 equal 0. This quadratic is also written in standard form. You notice that I have rewritten the notes so that hopefully you can read them a little better now. For this problem, the a is a 2 b is a negative 5, and c is a 3. In our first step, we said to move the c to the right side. Now our c is a positive 3, so that means we have to subtract 3 from both sides. So we will have 2x squared minus 5x equals a negative 3. We subtract 3 from both sides. The second step we must have a equal to 1, and notice our a for this problem is a 2. If it's not a, a 1, then we have to divide all the terms by 2. 2 divided into each one of these. And then rewrite that by simplifying the fractions. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we do have our 1x squared now. But now our b is negative 5 halves. Oops, didn't mean to write the negative twice. Just need it one time. So we have a negative 5 halves x equals a negative 3 halves. Now these fractions do not reduce. If they would, I would do that. But sometimes they will, sometimes they will not. All right, for the third step now, we use b. Now we have to use the new b. Our b is not the negative 5 anymore, so let's write over here on this note for 3 that we are having to use the new b, not the one that we started with. And we're going to create our box. We really will need the box information this time. Here's our box. We're going to write our b, which is a negative 5 halves. We have to multiply it by a half, and we have to square it. So be careful with this. Anytime the a is not a 1, we have some extra steps, and we have to remember that we have to use the new b, the b that's going to be negative 5 halves in this quadratic. You can see it over here. Now let's take half of that. We will have negative 5 over 4. And we have to square it. And we need to save this information. We're going to use it again. This will be a positive 25 over 16. So that's our third step, is to now take that information and add that on both sides. So we will have x squared minus 5 halves x plus 25 over 16, 25 sixteenths equal negative 3 halves plus 25 sixteenths. We must add the 25 sixteenths on both sides. Now the fourth step says to, on the left side, to factor. So we must factor this quadratic. Now this is why I mentioned earlier that you really need to know factoring for this lesson. The first part is easy. An x squared will be an x times an x. And uh, hopefully you know that the signs both need to be negative. 
A negative times a negative will give us this positive last term, but it will also give us the middle as a negative term. But what number do we need? Well, this is why I wanted you to write the information down in a box. You see the number that we had before we squared it? Before we squared, we had negative 5 fourths. That's a little hard to see. Let me change colors again. We already have the negative written, so all I have to write now is the 5 fourths inside the parentheses. If you were to sit down and try to figure this out, um, however, whatever method you use for factoring, you will find that you need a negative 5 fourths in both parentheses. Alright, now let's do the simplifying. On the right side, we have to simplify, but notice that we are adding fractions, and fractions require a common denominator. That denominator is the 16, so I'm going to multiply this fraction's denominator by 8, so I have a 16, and if I do that to the denominator, I have to do it in the numerator as well. So that gives us a negative 24 over 16 plus a 25 over 16. So let's simplify this. Make it look a little better. We're going to write the parentheses x minus 5 fourths. We're going to square it. Make that equal to now negative 24 plus 25 is a 1. So we have 1 16 on the right side now. Go back over each of these steps. Make sure that you understand them. We're really using a lot of algebra and we're using arithmetic here. All right, we've completed through step 4. Step 5 says take the square root of both sides and do not forget the plus minus. So if I take the square root of both sides and I don't forget to write the plus and the minus over here on the right, I'll have my fifth step started. The square root of something that is squared just becomes the something, which in this case is the x minus 5 fourths. Square roots and squares are inverse operations. Equals and then plus or minus. Square root of 1 is 1. The square root of a 16 is 4. So our sixth step now is to solve for x and write our two solutions. So as you can see, x is, has a negative 5 fourths. Uh, it's being subtracted by 5 fourths, so I need to add 5 fourths on both sides. x equals 5 fourths plus the 1 fourth. Well, that's our one solution. That's 6 fourths, which reduces to 3 halves. The second solution, now we come back and use the negative sign. Now the 5 fourths, remember we added 5 fourths to both sides, so that's positive 5 fourths, but we are going to now use the negative 1 fourth. See, the 5 fourths in both cases was positive, but one place we use a positive 1 fourth, this is coming from that square root, and the other you use the negative one-fourth. And this gives you four-fourths, which is one. So our solutions for this quadratic is x equals three-halves and x equals one. Now when your answers come out to be rational numbers such as these, rational meaning that there's no square roots, that means this problem could have been solved by factoring. So you could go back to the original problem that I had up here and factor this and solve to find the solutions. You will get the same two solutions that we have here. Well, I hope that helps you with completing the square. This is Susan Johnson with mathinabox.com. If you need help, please email me.